So I'm going to say that Wales need Dan Bigger back. Like, it's as easy as that. That's how I do it. So, Dan, are you coming back? Has Warbs been on the phone? How much do you want to get back to don that Welsh jersey? You should do it for free. Well, well, to, to, to be fair, he hasn't, he hasn't contacted me directly, Warby, but... Um, I mean, everyone's got a price, Jim, hasn't they? But I would, I would imagine. Yes, my there's a chance. Relatively high, relative, rel- my price would be relatively high at the minute, sort of thing. So, um, so I, I'm quite happy with my decision. I'm quite happy where I'm at, um, and it's yeah, it's, it's obviously a pretty tough gig in um, in Welsh rugby at the minute. No shit, you're happy with the decision. Wales haven't won a wooden spoon in 21 years. You didn't want part of that, did you? <laughs> there's, a few, there's a few of us actually who've sort of said we said we've we probably timed it quite well actually a few of us on like a whatsapp group and things like that but um it, you know it, on a serious note though it, it is it's tough to see because i suppose we're not as welsh people over the last sort of 10 12 years or whatever we, we're just not used to being in, in that sort of position um and it's kind of it is it's really tough to see and and, and at the minute it's it's a tough way where, where where do you see the improvements and and how quick do the are the improvements going to be? And at the minute, it, it it's it's not looking great. It's not as if our club game is thriving and this is just like a, a one off type of thing. I think it's it's going to be a few years of of, of a bit of pain and um and and see where we go really. Yeah, on that, be honest, Biggs. And I know we're kind of laughing about it. And if you don't laugh, you cry, right? That's obviously why we're laughing about it, because it isn't great. And <laughs> I've done that a few about, times in my career, Jim, don't worry. No, I tell you what, not as many times as I have. So I just <laughs> generally laugh about things now. But when you look at it, Biggs, did you, as an ex-player yep. who's just retired, surely you didn't expect much more? Maybe one more win? Like, what did you expect before the start of the tournament? Yeah, no, no, that's a good point, Jim. I, I, I did think that the Six Nations would be a struggle. I did think, and I'm not, you know, you look at you look at the amount of experience, the amount of players that have left or retired or, or injured, whatever, you, however you want to you want to describe it. But, but I think for me, what what I actually thought during the tournament was during each match before the Italy match, I saw something in each performance. Which which sort of led to a little bit of positivity, and actually the feeling in Wales was that even though we weren't winning, and we knew that we were going through a little bit of pain, there was actually a pretty positive feeling about about the team and where it can go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think a fair bit of that was used up on Saturday after the Italy defeat, which was which was pretty which is a pretty low moment, I'd say, because Italy came to Cardiff and. You know, a couple of years ago, we lost to Italy and Cardiff when they 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 pinched it at the end, and probably Wales were a little bit overconfident and and how we played that day. But I thought I thought Italy were great value for their win on Saturday. They look they looked a well coached team. They looked a well drilled team. Um, and if anything, the the, the scoreline flattered Wales. So, so I think all that goodwill that was used up in those first four games probably diminished pretty quickly after after Saturday's result. So that 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 for me, I don't think that we expected any more than than perhaps maybe one or maybe two victories um in the tournament. But but obviously the way it ended was was really, really disappointing. Yeah. And we should talk about that really. Italy were phenomenal. If we're going to get into the the bones of the game, the way they played this Italy team, it, it's a revelation, I think, from you know, you go back a year or two years, everyone was talking about, oh, Italy haven't hardly won any Six Nations games for however long it was. And I don't know the stats off the top of my head. And everyone's calling for, you know, Georgia to be given an opportunity because yeah. Italy was so bad. Now you look at this Italian team and, you know, they probably should have finished above Scotland, which they've done before. I'm pretty hey, sure of that. Hang on. Um, but then... You look at the way they're playing. Brex and Menoncello in the centres. Ioani on the wing. Garbisi at 10. The shape they're putting on attack. You've got Lewis Lyon now playing on one wing as well. Not the lost. The shapes and two how organised. Yeah. Oh, mate, yeah, it's not bad, eh? <laughs> yeah, Just he, retire he now, needs, he, he needs to retire. He needs to retire <laughs> sharpish, yeah. Yeah, if I was him, I'd be, I'd, I'd be planning that retirement speech as soon as possible, yeah. Yeah, but like the tries they're scoring, it's not... Like an Italian team of old, you know, get a bit lucky or, you know, get the bounce of a ball or something like that. Their attack with Casada as head coach now and how good they were in defence as well and how far they've come from the World Cup when, let's not forget, we said it before, they got hosed by France and they got hosed by New Zealand in their group. And that was, you know, 90 points and 60 points or something like that. To perform how they have in the Six Nations with how Benetton are going in the URC, but actually watching their 
the detail of their play. I thought it was outstanding. Um, yeah, Lamaro, a skipper, it, just it, ridiculous it, as well. I was just going to say, Goody, I actually, I actually did a little piece with um, Paolo Garbisi last week, and it was actually really interesting to to chat to him about the the, the influence of Gonzalo Caseda coming in, and um, he actually he said that what he's brought to the to the group is a real a, a balance between because Italy of old the last three, four, five years they just played and played and played and played in any position of the field. And he actually brought in a stat, I can remember, he, not exact numbers, but the amount of points they've conceded from just overplaying, whether it be from turnovers, drop balls, penalties conceded. And he said, if you want to win rugby matches, especially at a top level in Six Nations rugby, you have to have a balance in your game. And so what he's brought in, he's brought in a balance. And I think if you if you look at the last couple of games against Scotland and uh, and Wales in particular, there was a passage of play for about five minutes where Italy just engaged in a bit of box kick, box kick, box kick. Whereas before they'd have carried on playing, 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 perhaps conceded a penalty, conceded three points, and all of a sudden you, you're on the back foot again. So I think for from my point of view, I think he deserves a huge amount of credit. And speaking to Paolo, I think everybody's loved the energy and the I suppose a bit of pragmatism brought in from him as well, rather than just play, play, play. So I think from from their point of view, they looked they looked a well coached team, didn't they? Mm. On a much higher level, from my point of view, and this goes deeper than what we saw on the pitch, and this piggybacks the comments that Sam Warburton made and the opinions that I have on the investment in the game and in Scotland as well. And we and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, when you look at the state of the under twenties and the investment in the game up here. Italy, over the last few years, even under Kieran Crowley, in Benetton, in Zebra, and I know the results haven't gone their way, but in their youth system, and we, we, everyone's talking about Nacho, Brex, and Menoncello, like, th- this isn't a fluke. Like What we're seeing with Italy has been building over the last five, six, seven years, and it comes down to that uncomfortable conversation of investment. When you're looking at Italy now, you're looking aesthetically Look at the athlete. Look at how athletic they are. I know Warburton used the word athletes. I love using the word athletes. I saw the picture after of them in the changing rooms. And again, this is very superficial. They got the shirts off in in fucking incredible shape. Incredible shaped athletes, right? That is transferring on the pitch with power, fitness. They're running 80. They're now an 80 minute team, aren't they? Whereas before they weren't, they drop off after 50 minutes. Strength and depth. They're unapologetic about bringing in players like Montuani a few years ago, Lewis Liner, bringing him in straight away, banging him on the win because we want to win, right? Oh, yes, there's a progression. We're bringing Italian players through, which they clearly are because you look at their under 20 system. Sport is about investment. And that is what Italy have done. They've stood the test of time. I reckon there was a point, right, where they, they, they might have been thrown out of the Six Nations or, or the conversation at the top table was actually, we do need to bring Georgia in now because this isn't sustainable. They've now managed to get through that, get past it, have the most successful Six Nations championship they've had. And then this comes on to the question, Biggs, because, we'll again, we'll talk about Scotland. Where do Wales go? Like, How do Wales now get through this period of time that they're going through and catch up to Italy and France and England and Ireland, which almost seems impossible with the amount of money and the investment that's gone into the, the academies and the clubs? Yeah, well, well that's that's the million dollar question, Jim. And at, and at the minute, it's been, and I think what's what's been, you look at the last 10, 12 years in Welsh rugby and Welsh rugby, Welsh rugby has probably had these issues underlying for the last 10, 12 years. But because we had, whether however you want to say, it, a crop of generational players and a and a core group of, uh, of of players stay together for a long period and success, winning championships and grand slams, etc. Nobody really mentioned any of those points. But what happens? You, and you boys know exactly what it's like. As soon as as soon as there's a bit of pressure, as soon as results don't go your way, there's there's questions coming from all angles, isn't it? And everybody sort of creeps out from under the woodwork, and all the the, the cracks open up even further. So, where do Wales go? Um, they'll be looking to get some players back for the summer tour. So you look at maybe your likes of of Gareth Anscombe, Derry Lake, uh, Jack Morgan, possibly Liam Williams, even uh, available for the summer tour. So you have to say the quality of those players will clearly make a difference to to the team, without a shadow of a doubt. But ultimately, at the minute, we haven't, as a, as a Welsh player nation, we haven't got the quality of player playing that I suppose we we did have. 
and and it's going to take is it going to take one two three four five years whatever it is to to get a group of players to the level of perhaps where we have are before but but that's not without saying that France are going to improve Italy are improving and their 20s are going to produce more and more and more and, and, and at the minute it doesn't look as if there's a group of under 20s players who are saying right this guy's going to come in and this guy's going to be the star of the future or this guy's going to be the star of the future so so from a Welsh point of view at the minute there's no doubt it's it's pretty bleak pretty bleak and and that's not that's not because you know I, I only just retired five months ago but you have to sometimes call it as you see it the first wooden spoon in 21 years uh regions are struggling finances are struggling so at the minute is where do you where do you find the positives in it and and, I, and I've got no doubt that there's a good team in there somewhere there's good players in there good young players but but I suppose how long is that going to take? And I know Gats has spoken about the, they're looking ahead to the next World Cup and the, in four years' time. But but you only have to ask Wayne Bivak that if you don't get results and you don't perform, then you don't make it to a World Cup cycle. So so the pressure is is one hundred percent on the coaching team and Wales and the players to get results. Otherwise, some of these players and and. Uh, and somebody like Wayne who lost his job because of poor results, the, the pressure's on everybody. Yeah. Uh, the, the big question and the big talking point over the weekend was Gats, wasn't it? And what he said post-match uh, about speaking to the CEO in the changing room. Yeah. Some people have said he was going to hand in his resignation or he was offering it if they wanted it. Uh, you know, in reality, and I said it last week, Gats is probably untouchable at the minute um, because of his history in Wales, but also because if there is a man to go to war with... It's probably him, um, and he knows. I don't. Did, did he know the big, all the issues when he took on the job? Probably not. Um, did he have a, a, a realization when he started taking the job of the big issues? Well, don't forget, last Six Nations, you boys only went on strike, didn't you, because of the deal, um, and that was okay in the end. And then ultimately, this year, it's the wooden spoon. But it is a regeneration, and you know, people are talking about. Should Gats go? Absolutely not. I think he's the right man for the job. Should he change some coaches underneath him? Possibly. And look, I'd be phoning Sean Edwards. Sean Edwards ain't happy in France. Get him back. (laughs) That should be something that perhaps Gats looks at. But um, yeah, I mean, missing Jack Morgan, and you mentioned him there. Talk about good young players coming through. Jack Morgan, missing him, I think, has had a huge impact on this Welsh team from a leadership perspective, but also an X-Factor player as well, someone that can actually give them some go forward. And there are good players in Wales, um, but it's the toughest of time. When you take out the people like yourself, Biggs, and all the others that retired after the World Cup and, you know, there wasn't a huge depth of players, it's going to be hard for any coach. So I don't think Wales will achieve anything by thinking that Gats is, you know, the man not to take them forward. I 100% think he is. Uh, but there is a realisation of how bad they are. And you know, this will happen to Scotland in about three years' time as well. So don't you worry about it, Jim. Sorry, I, I was just going to ask what your what your opinion was on the comments in the aftermatch function, what 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 are in the press conference. What what was your guys' opinion and take on it? I think, and I don't know, my take on it was I think there's a part of Gats that maybe wanted them to say yes. Do you reckon? I don't think so. Yeah. See, I think he's I, done it. I think he's done it to strengthen his position, right? Well, say, you say, yeah, you say that. I know, like, I know that's the outside. But, and again, I'm looking at it from listening to Sam Warburton, listening to Biggs, taking a, like a, a wider kind of look of what's coming through the investment, like looking at Lance Bradley's comments on Ospreys and what they're going to do with the stadium, looking at the results of Scarlet's, looking at the results of the dragons like this is warren gatlin's biggest job on his hands now the job that he is in now it doesn't get any bigger because history is history right and people remember wales being unbelievable these back-to-back grand slams british and irish lions coach legend what he's done this is the biggest job he's ever had now and you do wonder whether he offers his resignation they say yes it's and they just have a complete overhaul of what they're doing. But if it's not him, Biggs, like who else is there? Say they say they took the resignation. They said, yeah, like you can't put Peely in there. You can't put Dwayne Peel in there. You can't bump up Rob Howley. Who is there, Dan? Like what, what, if he did resign, yeah, just well, play devil's that, advocate. That, that, that's, I suppose that's a really good point, Jim. I think if you're going to make a change, you have to have 
a viable option to replace them with, don't you? In any in any in any form of business or leadership or sport, whatever it is. And and I think when when obviously Wales made a change with Wayne back in back in November last year or whatever it was after the November series. They they'd obviously lined Gats up and they had a credible and, and viable option, didn't they? Yeah. So that's the that's the problem at the minute, and and also as well, probably somebody. It's not a particularly appealing job at the minute either, is it? In terms of, in terms of with the, the finances, exactly. the regions, and 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 the way off the back of a wooden spoon, you could look at it two ways. That you've just got a wooden spoon. You'd like to think there's not a huge amount more <laughs> further down they could go, but. What one thing that one thing I will say on the comments afterwards, I did think that I did think that when you, you you know you boys know what it's like as well. You know what it's like after a tough loss, a tough campaign. When you're in the changing rooms afterwards, very rarely are things seen clearly. A lot of things are acted on on emotion, aren't they? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're, the adrenaline pumping. Whether you've won or lost, you see things differently with that emotion. Now, for for me, I, I don't think that conversation should have been brought up. I think I think some what some conversations like that and and thing and what goes on in the change room, especially that close after the game, perhaps should have stayed in there. But where I think there should have been a better thing is right, go away, take the emotion after it, whether it be next week, whether it be two weeks time, whatever it is, go in and have a full Six Nations review with the CEO, with the the senior management, with the coaches, with with Gats, and then if he still feels like okay. I've taken this team as far as I can uh, and offer his resignation or the CEO decides that that's the path to take, then go down it that way. I just felt like, and I, and I, and I know what it's like, and I was never the best at doing this myself. So I'm not claiming to be perfect by, by any stretch, but I just felt that, and I know what it's like in the change rooms after the game, you you always see things differently when you act on, on emotion. And I just felt like the way to do it is, is sit down, review everything properly, thoroughly, and then make a call off the back of that. Um, but but I but I did I did think that it was it was big news on Saturday night, wasn't it? When when that yeah. came through, sort of thing, and um, sort of almost almost Ireland playing for the championship was 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 second was was a sideshow then and after that sort of uh, announcement. Well, it's one of those things, isn't it? So he's nipped it in the bud because obviously winning the wooden spoon is you know something that no one wants, and you haven't done it for twenty one years, but it then just cancels all those conversations around should Gats go? Because the CEO said, nah, you're in this, we're in this together. Um, that's the last thing we want to do. So he strengthens his position and basically it's now like Spider-Man, you go into a room and no one's pointing at Gats, everyone's pointing at everyone else around the WRU about what we've got to do. And at least there's a clear direction. And I get it, I get both sides of the argument. If I'm Gats, I'm doing the fucking same thing as what he did. And I'm sure, you know, when you you, you want to strengthen your own position or defend yourself, um, I'm, I, 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 know, I know why Gats has done it and it's it's now clear. The, the, the pressure is well and truly on Gats now though. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms of he's got to find a way out of this. And like you said, Jim, it's a huge job for him. And, and, and I agree, there's, there's not, there wouldn't be many better people in terms of... Um, in terms of reputation, in terms of um, what he has won, what he has done with with this team, but there's no doubt about it. He's 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 got a huge job on his hands to to turn it round, and um, and and like 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 everybody, if if results don't improve and performances don't improve, then then he'll be under pressure like like everybody else, sort of thing. So it's so it's 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 a big. I think the summer tour is big because I think Australia. Obviously, had a really disappointing World Cup as well. So yeah. that would be. Hold on. I suppose that would be a, a, a. Before Australia, you got to place. You got to face South Africa at Twickenham. Good luck with that one. I, I was skipping. I was skipping <laughs> that one. I was skipping that one. Good to be honest. I, I thought. I thought. Like, let's leave that one be. Maybe for the minute. Maybe that's a bridge too far for us. But um, but, but do you know what? Actually, as well, I, I actually really think the summer tour would be really good for this team because it, it kind of it was a similar thing to what happened to us in 2022, where we lost to Italy in that last game. Then we then we had to go and play South Africa three times in South Africa, and it was a real batten down the hatches type series. It was everybody got together. We got away from the goldfish bowl and the pressure of, of Welsh rugby and it brought everybody together and we had a clear, clear instructions of how we wanted to play. Um, so I actually think the summer tour, I think I, I do think Wales could surprise a few people on that summer tour. I think the South Africa game will, will be very difficult, clearly. But, but I do think that the summer tour is a good opportunity for boys to get closer, get away from the goldfish bowl, the pressures that 
that obviously come with playing for Wales. Um, and, and, I, and I do, I do believe that there's a good team in there, but they've got to start finding results and, and pretty quickly. Dan, do you reckon Gats will stay? Yes or no? Do you think he stands the test of time to get Wales through this? As in, does he see out his current contract? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I do. I do think so. Yeah. Yeah. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod. Hello, everyone. Big Jim here and a big shout out to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. For people that know me, I'm an honest man and I've used AG1 for years. It's transformed my morning routine before a train. It's not just a drink. It's a comprehensive supplement and simplified my health routine. Very simple. AG1 is packed with over 70 high quality ingredients to support my mental and physical health. We're talking essential vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and more, ensuring you get all of the good stuff that you need to kickstart your day right. Alrighty there. Just one scoop in water, give it a mix, and bish, bam, bam, boom. I'm ready to take on the world. What I love about AG1 is how it makes me feel. It makes me feel good. Ever since I made it my go-to, I've noticed significant increases in my energy levels. I feel sharper. I can do more podcasts. I can stay longer on the podcast. But overall, I just feel more balanced. I'm a big fan, as you know. In our busy lives, it's easy to overlook nutrition. That's where AG1 steps in. It's convenient. It tastes great and does wonders for your health. Absolute wonders. Interested in giving AG1 a shot? Then head over to drinkag1.com forward slash the rugby pod. Or you can scan the QR code. ka -ching. There it is. And you'll get 20% off when you subscribe. Plus, you'll get a free year supply of vitamin D3. K2, and you'll get five travel packs with your first purchase. So don't miss out on the game changer for your health. That is AG1. Enjoy. <laughs> 